Around 25 years ago, I was living in Boston. My friends and I would go to New Hampshire nearly every weekend as one of our group of friends had a family member with a cabin in North Conway in the White Mountains. I had made an acquaintance with an older man and later became friends with him, as we all did. He lived a few miles down the road from us. To preface this a bit, he had served in Vietnam in combat. He was one of the brightest, most intelligent, and intellectually engaging people that I've ever met. An all-around good person, and a man's man, as the saying goes. If the trauma of service in wartime affected him, I never saw any evidence of it. He had a laid-back, jovial demeanor, a quick wit. His attitude and outlook on life was every day is a very good day. Just an overall joy of a person to be around. I once asked him how he stayed in such a positive, upbeat mood. I was then 20 years old, and like everyone that age, I had what I thought were real problems and got into bad moods and stuff like that. He told me one night over a campfire, John, when I was over there in Vietnam, I went through a lot. I saw a lot. I did a lot. Hell. It was hell. I swore to myself that if I ever got back home and got out of that jungle, I would never have a bad day again. And I haven't. It worked for me. It was a great explanation. I never did forget those words. So as you can likely gather, he was a very level-headed, grounded, and intelligent man. Like many in rural New Hampshire and many in wooded areas around there, he always carried a handgun. Always. He carried two, I later found out. They were both identical Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 Magnum revolvers with short 3-inch barrels. Not a very common gun in that particular configuration, so I recall them specifically, even now. He loaded them with hand-loaded rounds. He had cast his own bullets of mostly silver. Yes, I said silver. He carried around silver bullets. Probably a great way to ruin the barrel quickly. He told me and a few of us in a very matter-of-fact tone to never go outside at night if possible. Never. Someone in our group kind of laughed it off and made a remark of some kind. That's when he got very serious. His jovial demeanor that I enjoyed so much was gone. He was very serious and said, Look, believe me or don't, I'm just trying to save your lives. There are things out here and they're not supposed to be. They shouldn't exist, yet they do. They're not bears, they're not deer, they're not anything that should be walking around, but they do just that. They walk around at night and none of them have any regard for your lives. Hell, they see you as a food source. They're an apex predator and they'll think nothing of killing you. So stay in the house at night. Then, he walked off. Needless to say, everybody there was extremely creeped out by his little outburst. We were used to him just being calm and collected and funny. This night was different, and he put everybody on edge. But then, the next time I saw him, he was his old self again. We talked a bit, and he told me then that he had seen what he believes were werewolves. Or at least... That was the closest thing he could ever compare them to. He said they were very large and very fast, and he believed very intelligent. Maybe even human-level intelligence. He also told me that's why he carried a heavily loaded 44 Magnum, which for anywhere in New England is really overkill if you've ever been here. But he estimated their weight to be 450 to 500 pounds, their height to be 7 feet or more. He was 6 foot 4, and said they had a foot or more of height on him. He'd been within 20 yards of these things and said they tried to flank him. The main biggest one, which he thought was the Alpha, kept his attention and the other two began what he called the classic flanking maneuver. He fired his gun into the ground as a warning since he wasn't sure what he was dealing with and wasn't even sure that his gun would even be effective. He fired two rounds and then leveled his gun at the one facing him. He said it threw its arms and hands up in a reflective defense posture and then stared at the gun intently, as if he knew what it was and what it could do. 
It then made a loud noise, and it and the others ran off into the woods. He believes that those noises, or grunts as he called them, were these creatures' way of communicating with each other, and that Alpha called off the attack because he didn't want any of his pack to get hurt. If you know anything about guns, you know a 44 Magnum is loud. A 44 Magnum with a 3 inch barrel is horrendously loud for reference. If this was a normal animal, just the sound of that gun should have scared it off. But he shot, and that thing, which he said was the Alpha, just stared him down for the longest time. He said he felt a primal fear that he's never ever known. And remember, he was in combat in one of the most horrific wars in our history. This was a man who didn't scare easily at all. Whatever he saw scared him to his core, so much so that he warned people not to walk around at night and carried guns on him just to defend himself if he ever came across one of these things again. Hearing him explain all this to me scared me to my core too, and I don't scare much myself. He didn't like being out at night at all and wouldn't be out at night often. And in fact, after he told me that, I realized that I normally saw him during the day. Well, that's my input. I've never seen anything like this myself, but a man I believe unequivocally did claim he saw something. I'm curious if anyone has ever had such an encounter with these things, and I'd like to know what you think they are, whether they're a werewolf or something else and whether or not his silver bullets would have any effect on them. According to him, there's things out there that are so scary, you'll piss your pants when you see them. They hide in the shadows of the night, and they'll feast on your flesh if you're not careful.